How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and I'm excited today to test a brand new player to the portable power station market. Now this is the Predator 2000, which is coming from an unexpected brand, Harbor Freight, and this is the largest they'll be carrying in their stores, and it carries a serious sticker price, so I have high expectations on what this will actually deliver. So let's jump in, start harvesting some of the sun, seeing what we can bring into this unit, look at some of the features, but also do some load testing to see does the battery capacity actually deliver, and then we'll both do some testing on its continuous and surge capability, which are pretty impressive impressive, but also draining the battery down through normal applications like running a refrigerator, a fan, some LED lights to see do we actually get the full capacity or are there some inefficiencies in this unit that you will want to be aware of. Now a nice little feature on the Predator 2000 is that storage compartment up top where you can put all your different cables. This one will be breaking out the solar cable which has the Anderson end and then goes out to MC4 connectors on the other end. That will plug into the back side here on the unit and you can see right at the plug it says 12 to 50 volts with 800 watts max. But if we look at the spec sheet on the right hand side DC solar says 17 to 50 volts do not go over 50 volts, 25 amps max and 800 watts. I combine the right and the left positive and negative and this is going to basically wire those in parallel. Now I also put on some power meters. These little power meters are super handy for seeing how much energy each panel brings in. And you'll see links in the description if you want to use on your own DIY projects around the house. They're super inexpensive and very handy. Now I'll plug in one side to the right hand side of that parallel splitter that comes with this unit. Just confirming solar's coming in and it is. And then I'll plug in my other side and the nice thing is without any extension cables, it was able to actually bring it in and we're confirming at least we're up and running, even though it's a little bit overcast with 200 watts coming in. So it just charged up the unit to 100% just off of solar and it took me about three and a half hours. Now the panels I was using are 405 watt panels and here's the spec sheet. You can see my voltage open circuit is 45.44 volts, which is under that 50 volt maximum range for the input capability on the solar input for the Predator 2000. But remember, you always want that buffer. If you're in cold conditions, that VOC or your voltage could go up and you just wanna stay away from the maximum range because that could either damage your unit or cut off your solar input and then you won't be charging. Now I found those 405 watt panels to be a nice match for that custom cable, one on each branch of that parallel splitter that brings it into the Predator 2000. And when the sun was out, we got up close to 800 watts. I measured a maximum of about 750 watts, which was pretty impressive. Now, if you had perfect conditions, I am confident that the solar panels could charge us in about two hours. But it's also nice to know, even in overcast conditions like I have right now, you're going to be able to get a reasonable amount of solar power in, maybe in the 150 watts to 200 watt range, because when you're setting up a system, some days you do not have perfect sun, so you need to get some power coming in to replenish your battery and just replenish the losses you have by running your inverter. So speaking of running the inverter, let's go ahead and test our continuous rating of 2000 watts and all the way up to the 4000 watts for the surge capability on this unit. So to start off with a continuous test, I'll run two heat guns, which will give us at least 2000 watts. The display in terms of the watts going out jumps around a little bit, but I'm going to run down 10% of the battery to ensure that this can actually carry that continual load and it performs really well. So let's go ahead and step up the stakes and see what we got for surge. We'll add another heat gun here. And then what I'll do is I'll just increase the heat setting on this third heat gun to see what we can get. Now that wattage is gonna be well over 3000, jumping all over the place, but we eventually do hit the max and to reset that you just press your AC button and you can reset the unit and it's back up and running. Now I would say the solar's checked out, 800 watts of solar input, the continuous power of 2000 watts checked out, and the 4000 watts of surge power also checked out for the Predator 2000. But let's do a little bit more of a real world scenario. I have a refrigerator here, a fan, and a string of LED light bulbs, a small home. This is actually a project that I'm setting up for sizing a system to power homes in Haiti, which is a future project we have on the channel. But it makes for a great little test to run 24 hours. So I ran the Predator for 24 hours powering this circuit, and I also ran 
and competitor EcoFlow unit to see how much do we actually get out using a separate small power meter. And these power meters are great to actually assess what is the energy consumption of your appliance. So you can size out maybe your power backup needs or a system like this, size out the needs if you have those appliances on hand. So I had my power strip plugged into that power meter and that's what's gonna give us how much energy have we pulled out over that 24 hour period and we'll take multiple data points compared to the overall energy capacity of the battery. What percentage are we actually able to use and how does the Predator match up to the EcoFlow? Now, obviously this home setup is way under the demands of your own home. And if you want to get solar and completely offset your power bill, you can check the link in the description and start off where I did, which was just sizing my system and getting an estimate on the cost so I could start making plans. And then I got a professionally installed system on my last home, which completely eliminated my power bill. Now, if you want to take more control of that process, do like I did on one of my rental properties, and you can take on the whole project as a DIY project if you feel comfortable with your skill set. Now the link in the description will send you over to a company that will help you with the designing, pulling permits, getting all the materials and supplies to you, then you take over, do all the labor, and then they'll help you with your inspections and getting permission to operate from your utility. You can save a ton of money and it's a pretty fun project. I actually have another one coming up where we'll do ground mounted solar as a large DIY project, which I'm looking forward to. So let's check out our results from the Predator 2000 and the EcoFlow Delta 2. So what we have is the Predator on the left-hand side and then the EcoFlow Delta II on the right-hand side. I took a bunch of different data points for the Predator. I really only planned on testing that originally. And what I did is I'd go out and measure the battery level. The first interval was a long duration, 18 hour test on the refrigerator. I was really interested to see how much the refrigerator consumed and I would check the battery level. So the first data point on this one went all the way down to 31% after 18 hours of running just the refrigerator. Then what this column is saying is we know the battery capacity is 1,545. So if we've used 69%, that would equal 1,066 watt hours. I compared that to the power meter, which only said 263 watt hours that's not awesome. That means I'm only 25% of the usable battery. Now it got better over time, but there was issues where I went to different data points and the battery level never changed, but we actually used considerably more energy and it was hours later. So the battery meter on the Predator 2000 seems to have a bit of a bug, but push comes to shove at the end of the day, we, out of the 1,545 watt hours of battery capacity that the Predator 2000 has, I was only able to pull out 858 or a 56% usable battery percent. Not amazing, but we know there are inverter losses on these that you really have to account for when it comes to your system design. So EcoFlow, I did less, but it was still a 24 hour test. I just took less data points. So we had a gap starting off, but it got a little bit better over time. And again, all the way down to the punchline, the Delta II has a capacity, a battery capacity of 1,024 watt hours. And I was able to pull out 680 watt hours. Now that was considerably better at 66%. It's not quite to the 75 or 80% that I'd like to see for a portable power station but it also was a 24 hour test and it's not too far off of what I've measured in the past from inverter losses on the Delta II. So it is a reasonable expectation to see 66% of the usable battery percent we are able to get. Now it should be noted that Delta II I've had for about three years and I've had that out in a shed for over six months and in cold conditions, sometimes the battery would drain completely down. So I was not doing it any favors in terms of getting the most out of that battery life. And still it performed considerably better than the brand new Predator 2000 that I bought just a couple days ago down at the Harbor Freight. Now a big benefit for the Predator, they are gonna be readily available in stock at many Harbor Freights, a five year warranty. If it fails, you take it right back, you get a new unit. That is a big benefit, but overall, here's a spreadsheet comparing a lot of different EcoFlow units and also one Blue Eddy unit that's more capable 
than the Predator 2000. You can see a lot of the different metrics in terms of its performance, but also retail price versus the sale prices that I've seen. Now, I don't know what the Predator is going to go down to on sale. Usually, you don't buy anything from Harbor Freight without a coupon, so maybe it'll go down considerably. But overall, usually Harbor Freight for similar performance, whether it's an inverter or generator, a bottle jack, whatever you're buying, usually you can get similar performance for half price. And when it comes to this portable power station, that is simply not the case compared to competitors and proven competitors on market. And I think one of the big things, the big critical issues with this, this doesn't have an app not necessarily just from a connectivity standpoint and monitoring the usage and changing some configuration, but how are you gonna update the firmware? If they have any issues with this unit, I don't think it can be updated. That, to me, seems like a massive issue. And after testing it, I'm not gonna necessarily recommend buying this unit. For me, the Delta II here, it's less capable, but you can check a link in the description or this QR code here. There's always sales. It's just a little over $400 right now compared to the $949 I spent on this unit. So that is a massive difference on pricing. Now, if you want to see an application of actually using one of these units, you can check out this video right here where we did a solar shed. It's a really fun project, and hopefully you guys can use that out on your own DIY solar projects at your house. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.